you were like, you're not too stressed about it because like, there's no chance I'm getting this anyway. It's not like I have to do this, otherwise I'm not getting it, you know. And, and that, the, you perform the best or you have the best negotiation when you don't really <laughs> care. It's like, I'm, I'm not getting this. This is not happening anyway, right? Hey, Linda, what's up? Thank you. Thank you for coming to this conversation. And I was so happy when you wrote me that email about 20K project. I'm always blown away by these uh, oh. messages. And yeah, and, and thank you for coming here to share your story and have this conversation with me. It's actually now 24K. Uh, Amazing. So, yeah. <laughs> the, the nature of big projects is that they're rolling into even bigger projects. Yes, yes, indeed. Yeah. I think last time we talked, I don't remember if it was like two or three years ago. Yes. So I want to hear your story from the beginning. Like, Yeah. Okay. Well, from the beginning, I was born in 90. No, I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, um, I, I was a graphic designer. Um, I'm, uh, I live in Holland and I was always very interested in doing something creative. So I started- Did you actually go to, to study graphic design or something yeah, like that? I did. I did in Amsterdam, uh, Gratis Lyceum. Um, <laughs> it's not familiar abroad, but it's quite familiar here in Holland. And after a while, I've been working for uh, different kind of agencies and also um, in a more like high end uh, interior design companies as well as their in-house graphic designer. But after a while, I was like, you know what? I want to do something for myself. I want to start up my own agency and, and diversify my projects because it was only very narrowed. And what kind of projects were you doing? Was that like branding um, mostly or marketing or? Yes. Well, like for instance, I worked for three years for Riviera Maison and that's uh, like a high end interior brand in Holland. And while well, they're also worldwide. And what I did was I made sure that, um, uh, so each, each season they have a new uh, like interior vibe theme. So I created the logo. I also was on board with creating the, the collection of the new furniture and home de de decoration. And also with the magazine. So like yeah. every month. Or Catalogs month, and stuff like that. Catalogs, yeah. So, so I learned a lot about how to use the tools, InDesign tools, uh, or I mean, Adobe tools like InDesign, Illustrator, and Photoshop. So that's what's very um how you say it, it was uh, very educational and then later i aspired to start my own agency so that's like 15 years ago now so i've been doing this for a long time but something occurred to me when uh, clients came to me for like logo design or catalog design and they were like oh could you also do our website because we really like your style and i was like well i can design it like how it could look like but i can't create it and uh, so they were like, yeah, sure. And, but I did notice that, well, they were willing to pay a certain amount of uh, money for just the design work, even though there was also strategy of, of involved, but uh, they were more willing to pay much more for the, 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 the people I hand over the design or the developers. So after a couple of those projects, I was like, well, I don't want to hand over my design work and even then I'll get it back and I'll see things which are not exactly how I envision it, even though they have the design. And so I was like, I have to do this myself. I, I'm going to try. Uh, well, I started coding, but I'm terrible at it. <laughs> uh, but I know it's it, I couldn't do the things I really love to do and just being creative, thinking outside the box and making something unique and special. Um, then I was just looking around. Well, I, I tried with WordPress, but that was not a really great fit. And then I stumbled on one of your uh, YouTube videos, Ron. Nice. And, <laughs> uh, you were talking about Webflow, and I was like, "Ooh, this is uh, this might be something interesting." So I think I watched. Which video all was it? Do 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 you remember which video was this? <laughs> um, I think a no code uh, uh, building web website without uh, coding. Got it. So it's like, yes, I'm the target audience. <laughs> And um, so I've been following you from the first, uh, at, at, from really the beginning. I think, I'm not sure how long have you been uh, on YouTube now, actually? I think on YouTube, 
I don't remember, maybe 2016 or something like that. It started out kind of like with the daily vlogs where I was just walking around with a camera before it yes. was like uh, educational content. That was just like, here's what I'm doing today. Here's what oh, I'm eating for lunch. Oh, <laughs> also, okay. I use Webflow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I start uh, following you from your Webflow. Uh, got it, got it. It's uh, probably topics. 2018 or 19 or something like that. So yeah. I'm an early adapter. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Yes. If you started in um, 2018, then yeah. Yes. So I um I tried to well I tried I did build some Webflow websites uh, using your content, but I was super super happy when you started uh, with your. Uh, your Flux Academy um, platform, learning platform, because from then on, I could really, uh, yeah, provide a service for my clients, which has everything they need, and it can be as complex as they want. And uh, from my first Webflow website I built till now, I uh, of course, yeah, I've been making more and more money, but it's also because not, it's not that I'm making the same website, but just asking more prices. It's really um, that every new project, uh, my my clients really challenge me to do more stuff. They ask for very specific interactions, and and I now I really have the confidence with Webflow I can provide or deliver. So that's it's been a wild ride and uh i'm so happy uh so that, what is uh, i would love to i would love to hear that like yeah. what has been growing in terms of complexity or like what are they asking how does the how do the websites okay well complex? in the beginning in the beginning i already uh, i made like portfolio websites so they only needed like a home homepage about oh service. by the way you didn't you didn't dive into like who are your clients you were like oh. I jumped into freelancing. I've been, I'm yes. starting my own agency. Everything works well. I've got tons of clients and they want me to do stuff. No, 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 so let, no, no. Let's no. dive into that. Yeah. <laughs> I did client work, but with like an agency between because I was not very confident enough to really go seek my own clients. So I, I quit working for like the in, interior um, brand and start my agency but then i delivered my freelance services to other bigger agencies got it so that's how i i uh, got my and did you did you brand yourself so i see your website right now is branded as an agency did you brand yourself as an agency from day one or did you from have like one. a linda the freelancer website initially no no, no. Uh, directly as uh, as an agency and what they and uh, those agencies they noticed that when they put me on a project, um, that some projects I was not doing as good as other projects. And the projects which I was really uh, excelling in was uh, um, designing that high-end online experience. Got so, it. So you have that that eye and taste for high-end yeah. stuff. So it's better to put you on these premium projects. Yes, th that's right. And, um, and my clients like now are... Uh, knowledge entrepreneurs um, active in the branches as like legal, fintech, um, or administration uh, companies. So these are companies, they do want a professional website, but it should A, not be boring. B, it should also match the service, high level service they provide. And uh, and of course, it has to convert. That's also very important. Oh, wait, and let's let's talk about let's stay at the beginning for a second. Yeah. I'm always getting the questions from students like, "Hey, should I have my website as a freelancer or as an agency? Which one is better?" And I usually say it depends. But I would love to hear from you, like, what was your thinking? Because on one hand, it does say kind of like Soap Studio. And it's like an agency, but it's very you in the front. There's an image yes. of you at the top and it's clearly your agency. So like, why did you go that route? Well, I think, uh, well, this is my belief. If you are a freelancer, I did notice if I would say, because my website was always like agency, but I would introduce myself in person like, oh, I'm a freelancer. But I did notice that then it's, it's not that they didn't do, uh, uh, take me serious, but I think um, freelancing is more if you do, are good at very one thing specifically. 
as in an agency, um, like I'm a one woman show, of course, but I'm, uh, I have my backup team. I have a copywriter, photographer. Um, I even have a great contact with the developers who can help me out with very specific uh, uh, Webflow challenges or coding. So I'm not totally alone. And I think if I say I'm a freelancer and I've got all this stuff mentioned on my website, then they will probably think like, how is she going to handle all of this by herself? So that's, I think it's the choice I made for being, an, uh, to come um, front as an agency. Got it. Sorry, Got it. Dutch okay. is not my first language, but I'm trying. I hope it no is. Worries, no worries, no worries. Okay, <laughs> so fantastic. So you started out, initially you were working with these agencies in between. How did you, did you actively reach, reaching out to agencies? Like how did you get to work with these agencies? Everything was uh, due to referrals. I'm lucky that I'm uh, surrounded with people who uh, who are like entrepreneurs and having uh, and they know people. So who are, just who are these? It is like your family, your friends. Yes, like... friends, family, definitely. Yeah. And, uh, a, a few of them were like, "Oh, uh, a friend of mine. She owns this agency. Uh, like she specializes in real estate uh, communication agency. So they do." branding, website, everything for like, um, yeah, real estate projects in the Netherlands. And so th that agency where they wanted to see my work, I showed it to them and they were like, well, this is really great. So they hired me for all their high end projects. So that's, it. and it, I did, did that for five, six years. And now I have no any. Uh, I don't do any agency work. Uh, I don't work with any agencies anymore. So how how did you make that transition from agencies to doing direct client work? I needed to do that for myself because I it still felt like I was not a business owner. I was still working like in a, like a nine to five job only for an agency, even though. I was like a freelancer, huh? but no, it was uh, for me. I want also wanted to challenge myself to see how can I get clients for myself and work so directly. So how did that happen? I started out uh, um, on a, a Fiverr. I just uh, put myself out there, a profile for the, and I gained my first Webflow website client with, uh, with Fiverr. And I, I was very honest, like, listen, this is not, this is going to be my first Webflow website, but it was very cheap. And I just wanted to know like, Hey, how, what if I would do this uh, for myself? And that's where I started with um, um, selling Webflow websites. And, but it went so well, good and easy. And the client were super happy. And from then on, I was like, okay, I can do this. I can really do this. That's incredible. I think there's so much advice or I think hate among professional designers to platforms like Fiverr, like, oh, this is for cheap designers, but it's, I love hearing stories about, yeah, it gave me a great start. And now I'm like, this was the, yeah. this was the head start I needed. And now I'm rolling the balls yes. upward. Yes. Uh, I was a little bit hesitant to share this, but I was, I'm like, no, um, sometimes you have to uh, start small. Because of course I wanted to create a, a website for a big uh, client, but I wasn't there yet, and 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 it was also like to see how this uh, webflow will suit me. Is this something? And once I had that first webflow client due to Fiverr, I quit Fiverr and I just started to. Um, to create websites through referrals with my friends because I, I needed that initial trust and confident, com, uh, confident yeah. to see if I could pull it off. And it was a success. So then I started getting more and more clients through the websites I l launched. And that's also how I landed those big projects. So a few questions about that. Number one, I'd love yeah. to know like, or I actually, I would love to hear you describe like what goes into a $24,000 or Euro website? Like how complex is this? What drives the price? Like, how is it? 
Well, I think, uh, for example, for example, the project I'm working on, they need uh, also a client portal. So once the um, so the front end will be a Webflow website, but they want us uh, a um, client unpacking experience. And I was I told them like, listen, I'm not um, I'm not familiar with really like a uh, like a, a client portal, but let's see how it will work out. I will uh, I will just do my research and come back to you. So, and it didn't prevent them like uh, from choosing me because they were I think they were very happy that I was willing to find out if it's possible, and it is. So I gave them uh, I showed them. Uh, my strategy, how how I would set things up using a, a different kind of um, third party uh, applications. And what um, will you be using for that? Just curious. Yes, um, Airtable. Yeah. First, okay, I, I member stack an Airtable, but they chose for another uh, application uh, instead of Airtable, Hasura. So. And I'm going to also work with their own developer. So they do have a developer in their team, but they really needed me for the high-end professional um, user experience. And it, and it also includes the design, right? Or yes, does it definitely. also includes a branding project? or Branding and the design and uh, photography. And uh, it's also going to be a Duolingo uh, du du uh, bilingual Duolingo. website. Yeah, bilingual. Bilingual. And photography is not you're doing, you're hiring your photographer partners and, and friends. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So uh, I only focus on what I do best. The rest you have to delegate. That's a big yeah. tip. Everyone I wanted has to ask you, because you have a really nice video on your website, like super professional. Immediately when you go into your website and you see this video, you know, she's a pro. So I wanted to ask you, like, how did you do this video? Like who shot it? Like, how yeah. do you make, how did you produce that? Because it really, I think like a good image or a good video can really set the stage for, Hey, I'm a professional and it does. I'm also expensive. You know, uh, <laughs> it does. I think people, uh, the, the power of video content is that, um, not um it's of course people like dynamic uh, content instead uh, um, of static but i really wanted the video actually the video you see on my website is just a, a short clip of the whole video because the whole original video you can find on youtube it's really with that i'm telling also t explaining what i'm doing and it's also with a client and i'm uh, and you see me uh, explaining her how, uh, showing her the artwork. So I think that's interesting, like a peek in the kitchen. Yeah, sure. It's similar. I don't know if you've watched. We did it once with a, we did a series called Trust the Process where yeah. uh, one of my last projects that I actually did, signed for clients, I've brought in a photographer and did a kind of like a yes. documentary. Nice. Saw, uh, so yeah. let's, let's talk about your niche. Like how did you... What what would you describe your niche today? Okay, um, my niche are high performing entrepreneurs and uh, companies who work with clients who need their accuracy. I think that's and accuracy is like uh, I mean, if you need a lawyer or you need somebody who is gonna handle your finance. You, you really need, the, uh, to, uh, they need to be accurate and also trustworthy. So I think by having a good designed website, you can really, um, it's like the, the front door of your business. You know, people look at the outside first and then the content and then furthermore. So my job is to establish trust and show uh, that these people or companies are the expert in within their niche. Got it. So your insight is that there are some businesses and professions where you have to build trust because if yes. they don't look trustworthy, people are not just not going to work with them. It's not like whatever, I'm a t-shirt brand or whatever. Exactly. If you're a lawyer or an accountant, you know that it has to be perfect otherwise. And the way to create that trust is by having good design that really looks premium or, or yes. accurate yes. or, you know, everything looks 
that's great exactly. okay that's that's a good that's my niche yeah and that's and th th those are just to kind of like understand those are small businesses those are large businesses usually do you work with the the founder the ceo or like yeah um, I always work directly with the uh, founders or CEOs and yeah, and actually, um, uh, it's a quite nice story. I think, uh, a year ago I launched a website and, uh, just a couple of months, uh, a company from the financial district in, in Amsterdam called me and they were like, yeah, we want to rebrand and redo our Webflow website. And we are already in the, the process uh, looking for other agencies to, to redo it. And, and they invited me to, to pitch in. So I was like, okay, well, this is quite a big company. It's, uh, it's really on the prestige, most premium area uh, of Amsterdam, the, the financial district. And um, so I asked them like, hey, how did you find me? And they said, well, we saw a website you made for another financial company and we really liked it. So we would like to invite you to, to do the pitch. And uh, so, of course, I felt very, uh, yeah, I was very excited about it. Um, but it was like the first, like really big, big client, I uh, think, because it wasn't a company with just uh, five or uh, 10 people, but much larger than that. What does doing so, the pitch means? Like, what do you have to pitch? No pitch, but just like pitch your services, or do you have to literally do something, come up with concepts or like, what do you okay. have to do? No, I didn't have to do. Because uh, I think it's different. You know, I got my start in advertising and in advertising yes. and also in architecture, sometimes it's very common Show that, something. yeah, you come up to pitch, you already bring design work and then they pick just the concept that they like for implementation. Yeah. And in web design, it's not really common or also in branding. I don't think it's very common. So I was surprised to hear you say pitch. So, yeah, okay. Um, well, they asked me for, to do a pitch and I think it's more, um, uh, they, they wanted to have it like a discovery call. That's how I call Got it. it. They it. want me to pitch, uh, not really like an idea, but maybe they want to see uh, who uh, who am I and what is would be my idea about a rebranding and and I guess I said the right uh, things and and so I could go for the next round and finally they chose me. So it was really. Uh, um, I didn't expect it, uh, to be honest, um, but that's also like a limited belief, thinking like I, I'm just um, one woman show, why would they pick me? So I was really going into that uh, Zoom call, like, you know what, I'm just going to be myself, I'm going to tell them what I did for the other clients, the project that they really like, and they really liked it, how I, how, uh, my strategy was, how I approached pro the project and the process. And they were, yeah, and later they were like, yeah, well, you got it. Amazing. So, Congratulations. That's, yes. that's incredible. I also, it yes. sounds like maybe I'm, you know, putting too much into it, but it sounds like because you thought you have no chance anyway, you were like, you're not too stressed about it because like, there's no chance I'm getting this anyway. It's not like I have to do this. Otherwise, I'm not getting it, you know, and, and the, you perform the best or you have the best negotiation when you don't really <laughs> care. It's like, I'm, I'm not getting this. This is not happening anyway, right? Exactly. Well, the first 10 minutes, I was really very tense and I was just. No, because like you see me now just sitting a little bit like this. So I know I was looking at the screen because it was a Corona time. I was looking at the screen. I see like uh, eight men looking back at me. So I was getting kind of nervous. And um, but after a while, after 10 minutes, I was like, Linda, you're never going to get this uh, project. Just be yourself. And then I just started to relax and explain and talking and asking questions, uh, uh, good questions, uh, because they were really like, oh, that nobody told or asked us that. And um, not sure, we should we should come back. Uh, I will get back to you about that. So it was really nice dialogue. So instead of being like, um, like being a sender, how you said? Yeah, it was yeah, yeah. Really it's, I think what you're saying right now, I think it's a very, um, 
I don't know, it's like an underrated sales secret where people think that to sell, I need to tell them why I'm better. But the real way to sell is just to ask them questions. Like, what do you need? What do you, what do you think you need? Why do you think I can help you? Like you ask them and then they tell you. And then they also think "Hmm, he's asking really good questions. Yeah. And I was really, really curious about the company. And so I was also, yeah. And I also think they noticed I was genuine about it. No, it wasn't. I didn't have any paper or notes with me. I was just like, no, conversating with, with them. And and later on, we, yeah, we were even laughing and I'm like, okay, you know, that's how I, it's better to just be myself and relax and let's see what we can do for each other. Fantastic. Now that you've got some perspective and you've worked with like high paying clients, mm-hmm. do you see like a difference between working with the clients that you used to work in the beginning or like different clients? Are there clients today that you will just tell them no? Because you understand that it's like, what's the, how do you, you see the difference? Yes, there's a huge difference. It's much easier to work with premium clients. Much easier. Um, because they are, um, the communication goes faster. Uh, in, before, when I was working with other uh, different clients or like, I don't want to say low budget because that sounds very um, the, like um, negative because, hey. Every- no, but it's, by the way, you know, smaller companies has lower budget. Doesn't mean they're not yeah, nice no. people. doesn't mean they're bad. doesn't mean that they don't appreciate yeah, design. But- Sometimes they, they just, they, they don't yeah, have the budget. And, it's okay. Uh, and also if it's just one person and uh, just starting out, it's, I also, and, um, and it's maybe also because I was also starting with Webflow websites and, and then maybe they could sense my, um, I don't know, um, maybe, I'm not sure how I could explain this. Well, let's say with now I'm working with premium clients. I noticed the communication is very accurate because they have to be accurate. So it's, uh, and um and everything, if I ask them something, uh, oh, can you deliver this or that? It's, I don't even have to ask anything. They deliver me everything I need. And it makes work so much easier, faster. They really make a priority. And as for when I was working uh, with uh, other the different clients before Webflow eh, development, it was like the, the, the less I ask for the project, the more they ask. It's like, and then I would be like, um, yeah, but this is what we agreed on, but now you want this, so I should charge you more. And they're like, no, 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 you shouldn't, you, you can't, because this should be also in the price. So, but everything can be solved with a better communication, also from my part. So that's really what I change in my business to really communicate, being very trans, uh, transparent about what we're gonna do, the milestone, the process, what to expect. And that's also gives clients trust and they're yeah, in the onboarding process. So it sounds like mostly you work with clients from, from the Netherlands. Um, yes, but before. But you work with them remotely, like, or. Uh, depends. I started my Webflow yeah. website in the pandemic. So that uh, so it was remote. Everything My was first, remote. First yeah. uh, clients were uh, from Canada, and I also had clients from Australia and um, Panama. But it, uh, I didn't have really a niche, so it was all over the place. But the last uh, t- two years, actually, like I only did it for one year, and later on, I was like, okay, I do have to niche down, otherwise I will be stressed out. <laughs> To handle all kind of different clients, so that's also key for running a, a, a agency smoothly, is niche down as much as you can and just offer one package. What did that? What What did that mean for you? Like, what changes did you make? Um, what I changed, I only sell like one package deal now. Uh, well, the couple of projects I did before uh, were also that, but I didn't package it as such as a package deal but i did notice a trend 
like what they needed in those specific businesses. So I was like, I don't have to reinvent the wheel. I can just have a system like this is what you need because of this, this, this. And that's, yeah, that's what, uh, what they, my client like. What, so what does the package, what, like, what does the it's package the, look like? The package is with, uh, it, of course, a Webflow website. It's a strategy, uh, brand identity, but also those little stuff what, that nobody think about. Uh, but if I mention it, they're like, oh, yeah, we should definitely have that. Like the email signature that is clickable, all these little but really important stuff as well. So what my clients know that if we finish the project, they have the all inclusive uh, experience. I always do all the clients do all projects include custom photography and stuff like yes. that or now. Yeah, because I do think that great photography also enhance the website. Before, yeah, before I did made website with their own images and it's, and they're happy with it, but I was not really happy with it. So, um, because I know they, they, it could be much better. So for me now, it's like, okay, you have to do the photography otherwise, or you should, or you have great photography yourself, like very recent and done by professional. That's fine. But if you only had a, uh, a few photographs with your iPhone, then I'm like, we should redo it. <laughs> That's interesting. What it, so have you seen recently that kind of design subscriptions have become popular? Like a lot of designers and agencies now they're doing, hey, pay us five thousand dollars a month yeah. and get unlimited design. Like I, in, I that is a new it. kind of like a trending business model. Have you seen that? What do you think? I uh, I know exactly which one you are talking about. This, uh, can I mention names of companies? Yes. Design Joy is the most yes. breath yes. from Design Joy. Yeah. He was on yes, the channel I as well. It. I, I did. And I was intrigued. Yeah. Um, I was really. He, he is the most popular, but now he is, he did a course and now everybody is like trying to copy him. And it seems like it's working for, mm. for some people. I was really intrigued. I did saw that uh, video run and. But I was also thinking like, you know what? You have to be, a, I think he, well, he says he does all the design work himself. So that means uh, if you, if we would have like uh, five clients and they all uh, want to have a lot of things done, because I'm not sure if it's fair use policy in um, uh, included, but I would, I would get stressed out. I think. <laughs> I think so. Two things I think about this. Number one, I think he works with companies like replacing their in-house designer. Yes. Like we, for example, we have on our team we have Nick, who is our designer. He's kind of like also on retainer, so you can say it's yeah. the same thing. And some, and we have ongoing. So some weeks we might send him a lot of stuff, and then other weeks we might send him nothing. Oh. So it's kind of like average. But it's not, it's kind of like ongoing work. It's not like, hey, we need a website, which is usually a, or a branding, which is usually a one-off big project. And obviously I haven't seen many designers that can do more than like, like three projects at the same time. I think it's already I overwhelming. I did five um, last year. I did, did five. five. I, did, I, yeah. I cannot recommend uh, anybody. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm just like, actually, I'm now working on, I think, four or five projects at the same time in oh. flux. And my brain is just like <laughs> melting because I need to, I have so much context switch jumping from project to project. It's just horrible. I never want to do that. Yeah, that's so, what I was thinking about design, Joe. Like, oh, would it be the same like I did last year? Five projects uh, uh, at once. It was almost burnout inducing, uh, but uh... and I think and I think he's working yeah. a lot and he is sometimes potentially burning <laughs> out. I think he said so, but I also think he's got a lot of clients, but they're not all not active yeah. in the same. And I have a baby. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like I probably do have flexible. a baby uh, boy four months now. So oh, yeah. crazy! Wow, thank congratulations! You, thank you. Four months, so it's still. Do you even yes, sleep? Yes, <laughs> he is an angel. He sleeps the whole night. Oh, you're so, I'm so lucky. lucky. But um, that not being a mom also made me rethink my business. Uh, so when I was pregnant, 
I was like, well, Linda, what are you going to do? Because you can't do five projects uh, in, in, at the same time and having a baby. So things needed to change. And um, that's why I'm now on um, uh, my vision for my company now is to just handling one project at a time. But yeah, and, uh, and really those um, complex premium projects that I can really um, pour all my energy, my knowledge uh, and my passion uh, in, into it, creativity, and still be a, a mom and, and be there for my son. Did you, did you take time off after giving birth? Uh, after I gave birth, yes. But <laughs> I was having a discovery call on the day of my uh, uh, delivery. Before same or after? <laughs> yeah, same day, but before or after? No, before the <laughs> delivery. <laughs> okay. Okay. So may maybe you didn't know you're giving no, birth that day before. it could happen any time. And they sent me home and I was yeah. like, well, we'll see. So I was just doing the, uh, the discovery call with uh, a new client. And uh, and then later I was like, mm, I think something's happening. I should cut this up. <laughs> and then, Yeah. <laughs> And I started that project after five weeks from uh, after delivery. I after afterwards I'm thinking, well, it was a little bit too soon, but luckily I do have a process in place which really helped me to keep me sane and keeping um, yeah, overview. It's... Wow, I can't even imagine. Like I know I've got two kids, and I know like what my wife was like after giving birth, and it was just like very it... intense. So I've got total respect for you. And uh, yeah, I don't even know how you do it. <laughs> well, having a system in place, I think that's that's also key. And um, and yeah. a, an easy baby. My baby's super easy. So what's that? Uh... Do you think about bringing other team members? Oh, like I thought you said other babies. And... No, yeah. not you. No, 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 not right now. Not right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, other people yes, into the yes, agency. Yes, I do. I'm now, um, I have a really great friend, uh, Melanie is her name. And she is a brand strategist. And um, I'm also inviting her. Um, I'm going to invite her for the next future projects. And I think it's, we will be a great team uh, to divide our work so she has a, a little knowledge of webflow but she's a great strategist so she can do the first um the strategy process which takes a lot of time sometimes more than developing the website because you have to to get back you have to fine tune you really have to get to the essence before you can create something amazing so uh, yeah i'm definitely want to um yeah to go to go just so just, just so that you can take time off probably yes, yes. you know and you know and or just not stress if you need time off or if you're sick or if you yeah. want to take a vacation and besides that i also think it's better for the clients because i do believe to to put the best people on the 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 the, the job and yeah, but there, there's uh levels to that like at some it becomes too bureaucratic and like there's yes. too many people the client doesn't like it's difficult I, sometimes i feel like clients prefer to work with like yes. i i did brand myself as a freelancer and i think that my clients wanted to work with a single person versus an oh. agency where there's a project manager but then there's this guy and this guy and they never know who's doing everything and they're not even talking with a person who's hands-on yes so, you're right and um and it's not that I want to be, I, I have no ambition to grow bigger than, than now. Just having a partner would be great, but no employees, definitely not. And Got it. I rather Got work it. with other uh, great freelancers who I uh, um, invite for their expertise for the specific project. And that's that's worked great for uh, till now. And I, I think we can uh, carry on like that, definitely. What do you enjoy most in the project? Is it like the branding? Is it like the web flow? Yeah. Like what do you I like do most? love the creativity. I love working from uh, like a blank canvas. And um, I see myself sometimes like, a, a, you know, like a medium. <laughs> that 
uh, like uh, you no, know, those clients are, are whispering what they all uh, want and they need. And in my brain, it just transformed in those from abstract ideas to visuals and everything. And then I just have to put it out there in Figma and then a Webflow and and also like the like, like the feedback. Even even if the feedback is uh, even I even like negative feedback because I don't see them like negative. I see them like, uh, you know, we're growing, we're getting better. It's, we're, you know, so. I, yeah, it's a collaboration. It's, it's a, a fun, fun collaboration. collaboration. And I love that my clients give me complex, yeah, things to do. <laughs> in the beginning, in That's the beginning, really cool. I'm like, oh no, this is, this is complicated. And then I'm diving in and then later I'm like, oh my God. It's easier than I thought. I can do this now. I can do this for every future client now. So that's really, that excites me a, a lot. Nice. I think you're, from a lot of people I talk to, I feel like a lot of people lean into either more like the visual side of things or like the technical development side of things. And you're kind of, it's, it sounds like you're excited and 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 well balanced oh, and you. enjoying yeah, both of them. I love both, both of, them. of them definitely because it's not that I, um, I don't uh, how do you say that uh, I'm, I'm not sure how to say that in English, but in Dutch we say ik ga geen uitdaging uit de weg. Every challenge I, I'm standing from like come on let's will you know I I know I can do. Yeah. Most things, if it has something to do with with Webflow and everything, and if, and if I don't know, I'll look it up, I'll learn, I'll get there. And I think to have that kind of confidence is something that I didn't have in the beginning. Yeah, as you know, I started with Fiverr, so no, but just take steps and and, and trust the process. Trust that there's a huge community are there who are willing to help you so also with the flux academy your community is amazing and uh yeah thank you and it and doing things is also what gonna grow your confidence so you've mentioned in the email to me that you're working on a yes, course yes i am yes why are you working on a course what i'm course is working that, on Tommy? a course that i um like now uh, because my prices have uh, gone up eh, because I'm doing more complex things. It's more the big package deal, but not all uh, uh, entrepreneurs or uh, business where people are uh, not yet there to make that kind of investment. And even though they're fun uh, people, I would love to work with, but I do have to make choices. Like you know, before I did. Um, Make uh, two projects like uh, they call it in Holland passion projects, passion projects. Like I just, yeah, do it for fun, like, like volunteering. Oh, yeah, I, like I also did in in the in the past. I did projects, um, uh, and I lowered my price way way below because I was like, oh, no, uh, this is a fun uh, person. It was very personal, and afterwards the other project came, which was even more exciting and uh better paid but i couldn't do it because i was fully booked so i was like you know what i should just be friends then with that person if i like them so much <laughs> but um or i should create something they can use so they can um they can develop their own branding with the um, uh, like in a group setting with me online so I can serve more with a certain kind of budget and create an, a, a fantastic online experience uh, without the price tag if they would um, book me one for one-on-one -on -one project. So that is actually very, very smart. I, I, I always say that, you know, you, I believe that you can build a website or do something under any, any budget, but of course, because I have a you know certain standards and like a minimum size of a project unfortunately i can't help everybody but if somebody would come to me and say well i only have five hundred dollars for whatever for a website then i would tell them all right so here are your options maybe go buy a template and stuff like that maybe i can only be like 
a consultant and help you out for an hour to implement or, or think with you or something like that, but try to figure out how to best yes. serve them. But I've never thought about creating a, a course or like a package that would help them to implement on your own. Um, yeah, there's actually a few kind of like models now, now that I'm in the, you know, online education business, there are multiple ways to think about it. Like there's do it on your own, like DIY, do it yourself. And there's done with yes. you, like, and there's done for you. So basically what we're doing as designers serving clients, we're doing it for yeah. you, right? So that's done yes. for you. And then do it yourself is you can sell them a template and they'll do it yourself or done with you is just like, I'll be a consultant and you do the work yeah. or something like that. So there's multiple models where and you I can like, help them. And really I like the, the middle a bit because um, I do like to have that client contact. So it will be like, do it yourself, but with me, I'll be there. Like, yeah, done with, with you, me. done with yes, you. Yes, yeah. and then yeah. I can still have, um, yeah, stay in touch and help those uh, fun cl clients or uh, fun business owner who do want those premium online presence, but still don't have, uh, not yet the and potentially they can become but, a referral for somebody else who is a and good it client. could happen also um, uh, maybe later in the future but that's not yeah. my uh my end goal it's really like how can i help you yeah. today that's yeah that's awesome linda that was super yeah, super fun chat thank, thank you. you so much for for being open to doing this and being open on, on sharing sure. your story and, and everything. No um, for people who want to reach out and stay connected, what's the best way for you? Like what's your social Instagram media of choice? Instagram Studio Soaked. Thank you so much. Thank you too, it's been Ron. A super, super oh, fun. I thought I canceled everything. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ron, for giving me this uh, this opportunity, opportunity to share my story and uh, it was great. Thank you.